Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and you are very welcome to the Spring Ignite Awards and Showcase, a slightly different event to what might have been otherwise planned, but here we are, and uh, delighted to see so many of you have logged on. Wow, just in the last few seconds, it's great to see so many here. My name is Jonathan Healy, and it is my distinct pleasure to be the Master of Ceremonies uh, for this evening's events, where we celebrate uh, the businesses that are taking part uh, in Ignite, in particular, cohort number 11, because this is their showcase and these are their awards. There are three awards to be given out this evening. Two of them have already been decided by an expert panel and another is being decided by you guys who are watching us right now tonight using a poll, but more details on that and on. Um, as you can see, I am in the great outdoors. I should have been in the Devere Hall supporting you all in different ways, but circumstances being what they are, we can't do that. Uh, but the good news is we've actually got more people watching this live webinar than we would have been able to fit into the hall. So in that context, it's already a huge success. Um, so what have we got? for you tonight. Well, we are going to be celebrating the best in innovation uh, that Ignite can offer uh, through a pretty innovative program uh, throughout the course of the next hour or so. We're going to hear from the president of University College Cork, Professor Patrick O'Shea. We'll hear from the vice president for research and innovation at UCC, Professor Anita McGuire. We have a very special guest for you as well, all the way from New York to give us her insights into how her business started from something very small and then grew to something very big. Uh, we will hear then pitches, video pitches, and they're what are important tonight because they will be what you are voting on from Ignite 11. The seven videos, and you have to pick which one is the best for one of our three awards tonight. The other awards are for best business plan, and then the overall award, which is the Bank of Ireland Ignite Best Video Award. Again, we've got companies that are brilliant just at the early part of their journey but have already done incredible things which we are here to celebrate across the course of this evening. So we have lots to get through and it is only appropriate that I hand over now to a man who has been um, at the forefront of University College Cork for the last few years as president and has had to really kind of reinvent how we do university in the current circumstance along with everybody who has done amazing work at UCC over the last few weeks. I'm sure he wishes he was with us here in person this evening, but we do the next best thing. It's time to hand over to the president of University College Cork, Professor Patrick O'Shea. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, Professor McGuire, Eamon, distinguished uh, colleagues, students, friends, entrepreneurs all. I hope you're all safe and well in this time of crisis. And you know, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste, as Nobel Prize winning economist uh, Paul Romer has uh, noted. And Ignite and the entrepreneurs that come out of Ignite will play a key role in rebooting and retooling our society and our economy. It's going to be a new world out there. We'll be hearing, you know, we were hearing of offshoring last year. Now it's going to be nearshoring and it's, it's going to be an interesting an exciting time. And you know, we've, we, we've experienced um, great challenges here before. And I'm reminded that uh, 175 years ago, our forebears brought forth in this city, a university conceived in a time of great adversity, yet dedicated to the concept that research, learning, understanding and practice would flourish here, creating value, for the moral, culture, and economic health of the people. And creating value is at the heart of your entrepreneurial spirit. So pressing forward as we are in, in, in these uncertain headwinds, uh, these values uh, self-evidently evidently important uh, back then will form our um, guiding uh, beacon. And uh, the spirit that uh, drives entrepreneurs like you will be absolutely uh, critical. I mean, even you know, when we think back to 1845, there were two aspects of what went on. There was the near-term situation, the, what I call the health, the community uh, building, uh, so that you know, building a university uh, during the famine uh, created short-term jobs in construction, and then long-term opportunity uh, for all. And, and so here we see it again, the day the university has stepped up uh, to help the community, uh, research and early detection, uh, treating cancer uh, treat, uh, patients out in, in Brookfield 
a call center for contact, contact tra tracing, housing, healthcare workers, many, many other, other, other things like that are happening. And so then the, the entrepreneurial spirit will, will create uh, the, 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 the opportunities uh, for the long-term uh, economy uh, going forward. And you know, one of the books I've been reading over the past uh, weekend is, is this book here. It's uh, called Crisis and Recovery. And it's about what happened in Cork uh, about 35 years ago when the tire manufacturing industry, tire manufacturing, uh, textiles, shipbuilding, all disappeared in a period of a few years. And so uh, it was a time when Cork didn't have great entrepreneurship, but it was a time which also sparked the spirit of entrepreneurship that uh, we see in Cork and that we see in, in you today. Because during this crisis in the 1980s, um, you know, people were very upset, obviously. Many, many, many people um, lost uh, their jobs. Uh, they saw a problem, but they weren't really willing to take the risk to solve the problem because people were much more risk averse back then. But you know, entrepreneurs are characterized by their willingness to see a problem and to take risk to solve that problem with the goal of creating more value than they consume. So that is the, the, the new spirit that arose in Cork beginning about uh, 35 years ago uh, and is alive and well in you today. So you know, right now, obviously, many people are looking at the local issues and, and, and the crisis through a, um, a lens, a magnifying glass, but entrepreneurs take out a telescope and look into the future and look at the world they want to create next year and the year after. And that is why uh, the, 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 your spirit, your, your perseverance, your enthusiasm, um, your entrepreneurialism uh, will, will continue uh, to, to be in, important uh, and critically important going forward. And, and your dedication, your passion, and your support for um, resilience uh, will uh, allow us to advance and prosper. And Ignite its, its, and its programs are going to be the key to our success going forward. And your success will be our success. And remember, you can't spell success without UCC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Pat. We've heard that line before, but it still never gets old. Uh, thank you uh, for that, Professor Patrick O'Shea, President of University College Cork. There's 198 of you watching this right now, which is pretty incredible. Uh, and we welcome you, and you're very welcome here to the Ignite Awards and Showcase. Uh, we are, unlike Pat O'Shea, who's got fantastic branding going on in the background of his house, I'm lacking a little more here this evening. The birds are tweeting. They may be nesting in my hair because it needs a good cut. But I'd like to thank the person already who pointed out there was a brush behind me, and uh, that has now been moved uh, for fear of offending anybody. So thank you for that. Keep the comments coming in on Twitter. Um, we've lots uh, to celebrate this evening, and it's all down to the fact that UCC is now a global leader in innovation. Here, ladies and gentlemen, is Anita McGuire. Good evening, everyone. I'm delighted to have an opportunity to welcome you all here this evening for the Ignite Awards and Showcase event. It's hard to believe this is the 11th cohort of entrepreneurs who've worked through the Ignite program, and it's great to be here this evening with everyone involved to celebrate the event. I want to in particular welcome this year's Ignite entrepreneurs. Just scanning through the businesses they've been working on and the diverse areas they've focused on, it's really impressive to see the work that's been done here. And I'm sure there were many interesting discussions between the various members of the group as they developed their business ideas in this area. I also want to welcome the Ignite alumni, people who worked through the Ignite program in previous years and have gone out to take their businesses, many of them to become very successful in the real world. It's great to see that you continue to maintain your connections with the current Ignite cohorts and we, we very much appreciate your time and your commitment to, to, to this engagement. But I also want to welcome in particular the people who supported the Ignite program. Without your support, this program would not be possible. So I want to thank Bank of Ireland, Cork City Council, Cork County Council, and the local enterprise offices of both the city and the, council, and the county. All of you have been tremendous supporters of Ignite over the years, and we really very much appreciate your support. But of course, there's a really important group of people I want to, I want to particularly welcome. That's the members of the Ignite Advisory Board, and indeed the mentors and contributors to the programme. Each one of you, in your own way, has shared your time, 
your expertise, your experience, and your advice with the Ignite entrepreneurs. And I'm sure each one of them has benefited enormously from the wisdom and experience they've gained from each one of you. The university very much appreciates your dedication and your commitment to this program, and in particular to supporting the young entrepreneurs into the future. As, the, as this year's cohort near the end of their experience with the IGNITE program, I think it's very interesting to consider the context in which they've developed their work over, the la over recent months. So IGNITE is embedded in the university as part of the larger research and innovation system within the university. And indeed, the last six weeks have probably been the most interesting and the most unanticipated six weeks of the university's existence that we've ever had. Every single one of us has had our lives turned upside down in ways we never anticipated. But what has been absolutely remarkable to see is the extent to which the University Research and Innovation Committee have really focused on bringing their own particular expertise and experience to bear on the challenges we face due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the middle of March, we reached out to the university community and said we were keen to establish an interdisciplinary COVID-19 research cluster, bringing together groups of people with different expertise to work together on the real challenges and the real questions associated with COVID-19, and in particular on how Ireland would address these challenges at this time. We were absolutely blown away with the response. Within about three days, over 100 researchers, academic staff and researchers from across the university had come forward and wanted to, to apply their own expertise and insight to the challenges for facing the country. It was really fantastic to see the level of enthusiasm and commitment from all of these people. As you might imagine, there were the life sciences, so the people with expertise in virology and the development of new vaccines, the development of new drug treatments. And there were also the broader public health researchers, people who understand how you approach public health systems and how you develop the, the most appropriate approaches to ensure that we take safe steps. But of course, the expertise, the researchers who came forward had much broader ranges of expertise. So for example, the researchers in Tyndall came forward with their expertise of how you can utilize technology, for example, in sensor technology, in proximity detection, in many different areas, each keen to bring their own expertise to bear and to solve very real challenges which we're facing at this time. And then more broadly across the research community, we have the researchers from the social sciences who understand the impact of social change and how you encourage people to comply with these very significant um, constraints that we're all dealing with. People from the economics area looking at how Ireland can focus on economic recovery after this challenge. People in public policy development, how do you address an unprecedented situation like this in the most, in the most effective way? And over, right across the university, it's really rewarding to see these interdisciplinary research teams working together, each bringing their own particular area of expertise to a problem, but by working together, bringing a much richer and a much more uh, impactful outcome to the research programme. Of course, here in the university, we're, we're fortunate to be situated at the heart of one of the largest clusters of pharmaceutical companies in the world. Here in the Cork region, you have the majority of the major players in pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical manufacturing worldwide have sites here in Cork. And it's been really rewarding to watch over the last six weeks how each one of them has continued to contribute, continue to develop and deliver medicines which people need worldwide for their health reasons. Right, despite all of the constraints that we're operating under, each of these companies worked very hard to find ways to continue their important work, to continue to manufacture and deliver medicines. And it's, it's very rewarding to see the way in which they've worked through those challenges over, the, over recent weeks. And I think it's safe to say that the globally, the, uh, the the security of the pharmaceutical supply chain through the sites here in Ireland will be recognised over this period of time. The world has been able to rely on pharmaceutical manufacture in Ireland to continue to deliver medicines at this very challenging time. So as we look forward, you know, we've been through a very challenging six weeks. I think probably the key message for the entrepreneurs here today is your, the key to success in, in business is not just being, being able to anticipate the future, but also in being able to develop a business concept to the point where it's sufficiently resilient that when an unexpected 
um, event happens, that not only do you have the solutions which are needed, but you're also able to adapt and pivot and bring your business idea to apply to the new context. And I'm sure the entrepreneurs who've been through the Ignite program are very well prepared for this new and changed world. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing the details of your work and in particular to seeing how each one of your companies develops over the coming years. So the very best of luck to each one of you and thank you to everyone who participated to make the Ignite program what it is today. I want to particularly call out Eamon for his leadership on this program. You know, his commitment to working with each one of the entrepreneurs is truly remarkable and very much appreciated. So thank you very much everyone and the very best of luck. Anita, thank you very much indeed uh, for those kind words. Right, we're up to 203 people watching right now, and that's very important because we need them. Uh, there's, a, there's a hint of X Factor about the awards because we are about, in a few minutes' time after we hear from our guest speaker, to watch their seven video pitches. And we are asking you, the viewing public, to pick which pitch is the best. And we'll tell you how to vote a little bit later on, but we do need you this evening, folks, to participate uh, in this process. And to be fair, if we weren't doing this virtually uh, through a webinar, we wouldn't be able to do that at all. So added value, uh, given that we're all stuck at home uh, through the COVID-19 crisis. So we now move on to our guest speaker this evening. And I suppose it was an advantage that we could go anywhere in the world and ask somebody to have a chat with us. Uh, she is an award-winning entrepreneur. She is a global business development leader, the founder of Smidgen, which is a mobile app which focuses on real-life conversational skills with users in 175 different countries. Um, now, she's a board member of the Irish International Business Network and a contributing writer to Ford, but most importantly, and more important than all of that, she was a graduate of University College Cork, having a BA in Italian and French. Uh, prior to founding Smidgen, uh, she had executive positions in both public and private companies in the US and Europe, and she's 20 years of experience in executive sales, marketing, business development in over 30 countries, and she has a huge insight uh, to bring to our entrepreneurs, seven of whom, seven businesses, are very anxious right now, but they're about to find out if they're going to win an award as part of this process from Ignite. But before we have a look at their pitches, before we find out who the winners are, it is time to invite our special guest, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome, from Smidgen, Susan O'Brien. Hello to all the Ignite participants and congratulations to the awardees for getting this far. As a UCC graduate myself, it's a real pleasure to be part of this Ignite event and share a message about my own experiences as an entrepreneur down the years. Strange times indeed, as we find ourselves thinking about virtual awards ceremonies, but uncertainty is definitely no stranger to the startup world. And it's, in fact, your ability to adapt that will be your greatest asset. That's never more evident than today, as we find ourselves in an overwhelmingly uncertain environment on a global scale. And circumstances like these can be marginally terrifying, actually. Um, I don't know what happened. The rules just changed. I hadn't planned on that. What now? So I'm actually going so far as to say that uncertainty is the new failure because the startup world has been referring to failure for years as some kind of rite of passage, which it's not, and something that should be embraced, again, which it's not. And failure in that sense is actually easy. It's pretty straightforward. You can quit, you can pivot, or you can start over. But uncertainty is far more treacherous because it's unclear what your next move should be. So while the world has changed and we haven't yet been handed the new rules for engagement, I do have seven rules for survival in the startup world that I've adhered to down the years that might prove to be helpful. Okay, number one, your passion is your purpose. Don't waste your time investing time, money, energy in something that you're not hugely passionate about because that's what's going to sustain you in the tough times and there will be tough times. If you're passionate enough about what you're doing, then you'll ignore the negativity or the naysayers. You'll recover from crushing disappointments and you might even manage to convince some non-believers. If you're passionate enough about what you're doing, you won't mind the long hours or the huge personal investment that you're making because you believe in what you're doing. Number two, be authentic. 
Authenticity is a word that we hear a lot these days. And it's actually why we choose to follow certain celebrities, organizations, um, different brands. If you're your most authentic self, then you don't have any competition because nobody else can be you. So be true to yourself and act on it in what you say, in what you do, in how you engage and communicate. And if you can manage to instill that level of authenticity across your organization, then it's an instant recipe to stand out above all the noise. Number three, put yourself out there. It sounds easier than it actually is, but if you're not telling your story, then how can you expect anybody else to tell your story for you? You believe in what you're doing, so then it's your responsibility to put yourself out there and share your message and your story with the world. So attend events well, when the world reopens, obviously. Join the relevant organizations, write or blog or apply to speak at events. However you do it, find a way to get your message and your unique point of view out there. Number four, get over your fear of public speaking. Now, I don't know anyone who was born with a love of public speaking, but you're going to have to get over it and you're going to have to get on with it. As an entrepreneur, you have to overcome any reluctance you might have to public speaking. You may never learn to love it, but you can get better at it. So Google some tips on overcoming nerves and start small, practice with a mirror, practice with a friend, but start. Number five, play to your strengths. Look, you can't be great at everything. No one's great at everything. So decide what it is you're good at and what you love to do, what you enjoy doing the most. That's where you focus your time. At the same time, make a list of what it is you're not good at and the stuff you kind of despise. Now for what it's worth, it's always easier to write a list of the things you're not good at. Then find people to fill those gaps in your weak spots. So for example, if you don't like to negotiate, then you're probably not the best person to lead sales in your or anyone else's organization for that matter. So hire people to compliment you. Surround yourself with people who are different to you. And what that will do is it will allow you to spend your time doing the stuff you do best because that's where your greatest chance for success lies. Number six, know your numbers. Now, if this is one of your strengths that you listed, one of the things that you said you were good at, you're lucky. If it's not, fix it. This one is non-negotiable. And even more so actually in a time of massive uncertainty like we find ourselves now. Financial projections, margins, cash flow, venture funding, raising money. It's a particular language, a financial language that you need to be able to speak. Now you don't have to be an accountant. You don't need that level of knowledge, but you do have to be able to understand an accountant or a financial person when they're talking about your numbers. And finally, number seven, harness the power of your belief. Sounds a bit warm and fuzzy, but the truth is we are what we believe. In circumstances, especially like today that we find ourselves in, circumstances will change, things will change. People are going to disappoint you. Deals are going to fall apart. Contracts won't be signed at the 11th hour. But if you believe fully in what you're doing, then you can tap into that strength to help keep pushing you forward. And one of my favorite quotes is by Mahatma Gandhi, who famously said, strength does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. So the question I pose to you today is this. Do you believe that you can win with your idea or your venture? If you don't, get out, do something else. If you do, then harness the power of that self-belief and let it push you forward. Good luck. Thank you, Susan. The next part is the uh, videos 
of this year's uh, companies that have been working extremely hard um, and putting these videos together because they want to win the best video pitch award, which is up for grabs this evening at your hand, ladies and gentlemen. What we want you to do is after the see the videos, there is on the panel beside you little dots. And if you click on the little dots, it'll give you the option of a poll. And if you go into that poll, then you're going to be able to decide which video you like and vote for it. One vote per person of all of you that are there. And that will feed in to this evening's proceedings. The other two awards, the two big awards have already been decided by uh, an expert panel. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have a look at those video pitches. You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the class of Ignite 11. Our first pitch of the evening is by Anzelika Samilova, founder of Global Mind Bank. Hello, my name is Angelica. I was born in Russia and I came to Ireland when a big corporation simply could not source talent locally. Google, Facebook and others are already sourcing their talent internationally instead of relying on a very competitive local market. Over 80% of organizations in Ireland and over 90 in the UK struggle with sourcing talent. It costs those companies over 4 billion euro a year in the UK alone on additional training, on additional recruitment costs and on simply providing more salary on the offer. Global Mind Bank is a platform for service that allows you to search talent globally. Our unique feature, relocation and immigration calculator, allows you to understand whether it is even possible for a professional to relocate from abroad, how much will it cost and how long will it take. Now we cannot ignore the elephant in the room, that being COVID-19 obviously. In the recent report, Central Bank of Ireland estimated 25% unemployment rate in the worst month of quarantine. Now this includes professions like beauticians, but finance workers and IT professionals are still at a very low risk of losing their jobs. We want to revolutionize the recruitment industry altogether by simply finding the best talent, regardless of where they're from. We would like to connect with anyone who finds it hard to find the right talent. We believe globalization will solve talent gap. We just want to be the first in line to help it. People are the new oil. Join us. Up next, we have Anna Lee De Jaeger, founder of Jabula. Imagine that you live in lockdown. Imagine that your family is more than 13,000 kilometers away. That is the reality for more than 10,000 South Africans living in Ireland. We at Jabula bring back memories from home for our South African customers through our range of meat products that we source locally from the highest quality organic ingredients. Because South Africans love our products so much, we have an estimated market value of more than a million euro. In 2018, I studied the Diploma for Speciality Food Production at UCC and that is when the ideas originated for me to start the company Jabula. The word Jabula means happiness. It means positivity. We at Jabula believe strongly in a bright future for all of us in Ireland. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Budavos Island. Our third pitch this evening is by Emer Keevney, founder of ORC Consultants. Hi, my name is Emer Keevney. I'm a marine biologist, ocean educator and executive director of Ocean Research and Conservation Ireland, a four impact social enterprise that's based in University College Cork. Here at ORC, our mission is that we are dedicated to monitoring and minimising disturbance to marine megafauna. That includes cetaceans, whales, dolphins and porpoises, pinnipeds, seals and seabirds. We started Ocean Research and Conservation Ireland because Earth is currently facing its sixth mass extinction. We're losing species faster than they can be discovered. For example, we've lost more than 60% of our wild animals in the last 50 years. In addition to that, there's also a climate crisis that we're facing. And the latest IPCC report led to a global strike for climate. Ireland is committed to generating 70% of our electricity from renewables by 2030. 
But to do that, we need to move away from old methods. In addition, the EU has a target of generating 32% renewable energy by 2030. That equates to 20,000 offshore wind farms being developed over the next 10 years. All of those wind farms will require an environmental impact assessment to get planning permission. These involve surveying for marine wildlife to determine protected species abundance and distribution within the proposed sites. That equates to 720,000 survey days for marine mammals and seabirds over the next 10 years, a net worth of 7.2 billion euro. Wildlife surveys can cost up to 360,000 euro on professional fees and boat hire over the course of the year, not to mention the risk of human safety. With ocean research consultants, novel and more accurate remote sensing methodologies, we can help energy companies save over 200k per year, reduce the risk to human safety and provide more robust data to protect marine wildlife, while helping companies to get their planning permission in an environmentally friendly way and assisting the EU in reaching their energy targets. To find out more about our highly innovative solutions, please contact me via our website www.orcireland.ie. Up next, we have Ali Rose Sisk, founder of SafeCare. Did you know that nurses spend more time on paper documentation than any other nursing task? More than assessing our patient's blood pressure, providing breakthrough pain relief, or communicating with our patients, families, and staff. 70% of nurses who took part in a national survey declared that this documentation adds little if not no value to our patient care. This survey comprised of 170,000 nurses. As a nurse who has spent the past seven years battling to prioritise patients over paperwork, I can only agree with this. Then why are we documenting? Nursing homes are continuously audited and risk immediate closure if documentation is not complete. SafeCare is a digital solution which decreases documentation time, increases care quality and reduces nursing home cost. All by digitalising our traditional paper documents. Using our unique algorithm, we will be the first software on the Irish market to automate the audit task without compromising the process which underpins it. This can result in a national savings of up to 60 million per year or 100,000 euro per nursing home. Now, more than ever before, we as nurses need time with our patients carrying out critical, life-saving care. And our nursing homes need to ensure that they are compliant with ever-changing regulations. Because sometimes there are no second chances. Right now, healthcare is everyone's business. If you'd like to find out more about SafeCare, then please come and speak with me. Our fifth pitch is by Connor Hayes, founder of TechV. In the past, medical personnel chose devices for patients to manage life-altering medical conditions at home, such as MS or spinal cord injuries. Today, people seek devices supporting them to live independently at home, and they typically research online to access samples. There is a missed opportunity to support people at home in the choices they make. Sales staff aren't empowered to follow up on samples, as they typically are entered in large accounting systems and aren't tracked. Medical device manufacturers have always had the problem of millions of dollars of wasted samples shipped annually. The average time it takes medical device companies to move from traditional marketing techniques to online sales is 12 months. Our product can reduce this time to eight weeks. I'm Connor Hayes, and I'd love to help you make the jump to online sales. MedTechV provides software solutions to enable sales teams to manage sample products, as well as finding and converting new customers through online channels. We are currently working with one of the top five global urology companies to help them achieve a new direct to consumer online channel. We have a new community for sales teams with access to industry peers and exclusive content produced by analysts. I'd be delighted if you contact me directly at medtechv.com. Up next, we have Luke O'Mahony and Connor Walsh, founders of Traxit. Did you know that 22,500 worth of machinery is stolen from Irish construction sites every day? Or that machinery theft costs the UK construction sector 2.2 million daily? In the past three weeks, COVID has resulted in a 50% increase in construction theft. 
present solutions fail to combat theft. There are many GPS trackers that use legacy SIM card based communication methods. These are easily detected, blocked or disabled by thieves. There are also many asset management software solutions on the market, all of which rely on manual data entry. My name is Luke O'Mahony and together with Connor Walsh, we have co-founded Traxit. Our solution combines innovative hardware with user-friendly software that automates manual data entry. Our hardware is SIM-free, independently powered for up to nine years, and crucially, cannot be jammed or scanned by thieves. Our hardware has the best coverage on the market, is independently powered for over nine years, and cannot be scanned or jammed by thieves. Our software enables our users to monitor the location, performance, and utilization of their assets globally. After months of research and development, we have recently launched our solution into a number of cart based planned rental companies, and towards the end of this year, we are forecasting that our platform will be managing over 9 million worth of machinery. In the coming weeks, we will be launching our distribution partnership with a national organisation that has over 100,000 members. Join us on our journey to a safer Ireland where machinery theft is a thing of the past. If you'd like to learn more or hear about our exciting investment opportunity, please get in touch. And our final pitch of the evening is by James Northridge, founder of Your Ability. My, my own daughter is nine going on 10 years of age. She's severely dyslex dyslexic, would, would struggle majorly with reading, writing. Well, James knows exactly what he's talking about because he's dyslexic himself. So he understands from a, a kid's perspective. Hi, I'm James, founder of Your Ability. We're changing how students with learning disabilities experience education. We're doing that by supporting their parents to better understand how assistive technology can change their educational challenges. Do you want to find out how we do this with our online courses? Come on, let's go have a look. So in terms of our online courses, parents sign up on our website and from there they jump straight in to an online course that gives them access to understanding how technology works, what technology is going to help in terms of reading, in terms of writing, in terms of maths. Having dyslexia and ADHD myself, I very much understand the challenge of learning. And so I very much, I guess, understand the challenge of the student, the challenge of your son or daughter. And that's why I'm really passionate about empowering families, empowering educators, to make sure that kids with disabilities reach their true potential. Not only here in Ireland, but across the world. Since going live with our online courses in October 2019, we've had over 700 users sign up with a turnover close to six figures. If you would like to be part of this exciting journey as we scale into the UK and US markets by way of investment or mentorship, please get in touch. So they're good, aren't they? So those are the companies that are up for the awards this evening. And this is where you lovely 212 people who are now watching at home come into play. Because what I would like you to do right now is over on this side of the screen, I think, or if you're watching a mobile down this side of the screen, uh, there will be the option of a poll. And in that poll, you can choose which of these videos uh, you would like to win for best pitch. So what we're looking for here is which video best uh, communicates a good business proposition. Maybe think of it as which one would you like to invest in if you had money burning a hole in your back pocket? Which one spoke to you the most? We're going to leave that poll open for a couple of minutes and at the very end of the proceedings this evening, we will announce the winner. So you very much have control over who wins that award this evening. And as Dermot O'Leary would say in the X Factor, the voting is now open except we don't have the budget for the sound effects that he would have at the same time. Um, we're celebrating Ignite 11 tonight uh, because they are uh, the most recent group to have passed through the Ignite program and very good they are, as we've seen from that video. But the good news, of course, is that there are more intakes going on right now. And there's been this gargantuan effort to move everything online in the last couple of weeks as the team tries to deal with uh, what coronavirus has thrown at us, i.e. that we can't leave our house except to go within two kilometres and very few people live within two kilometres of the UCC building, which is even in its own right closed. So this is a unique group facing a unique challenge, but no better people to rise to that challenge. Here, ladies and gentlemen, are more details on Ignite 12 and 13. We're delighted to showcase Ignite 12, 
who joined the programme last October. Since then, through market research, surveys, customer interviews and product tests, they've worked to validate their business models to show that their product solves a big enough problem for enough customers to support a sustainable business. Among the founders are bachelors, masters and PhDs with backgrounds in science, engineering and arts, working in areas as diverse as brain monitoring, additive manufacturing and music sharing. If you are interested in finding out more about these early stage startups, please do contact us. With a background in manufacturing, Will Nolan's target customers are hardware product developers and manufacturers who can use additive manufacturing technologies to cut product development costs, reduce time to market and decrease assembly line downtimes. The technology support local supply chains and less dependence on imports from international markets. Jen Martin has a law degree and a master's degree in applied psychology. Her business, Arthur, combines English language training with psychological coaching to give non-native English language speaking senior executives the competitive edge in global commerce. Software developer Alex Thomas's Cloudwalk is an audio based e-learning platform that allows software engineers to prepare for AWR certification exams while walking, running and commuting. Connor Organ has a degree in product design and technology from UL. His business, Cove, is developing a wearable device that allows users to monitor and manage their mental health and overall well-being. Game developer Kean O'Shea is working on IndieLink, a social network that allows game developers to build the cross-functional teams necessary to bring a new game to market. Working with in Research Centre Infant and the Embedded Systems Research Group at UCC, Marco Sullivan is developing a diagnostic medical device to detect brain anomalies in newborn infants. The device will be lower cost, easier to use and more accessible than monitors currently available. Mafalda Hroskova is building a platform that helps businesses increase sales and reduce costs by connecting their marketing teams with one or more appropriate YouTube influencers. Aiden Powers, powered through Golf App, will help golf resorts to increase revenue and cut costs through managing pace of pay through the course and eliminating the use of physical scorecards through electronic scoring. Computer science graduate David Killity and business information system student Jordan Morrison have developed an app, Setlist, that uses artificial intelligence to create a shared playlist based on the listening preferences of group members. Target applications include house parties, car trips, shared workplaces, company canteens and hospitality and retail. And I'm delighted also to introduce the Ignite 13 cohort who joined the program just three weeks ago. This cohort includes founders with qualifications in financial maths and actuarial science, fintech, health and leisure, international relations and architecture from UCC, as well as the Cork Institute of Technology and the Institute of Technology in Tralee and working in areas as diverse as cardiac rehabilitation, insurance risk assessment, financial markets and biodegradable alternatives to plastics. We hope you'll support them as they progress their businesses in the months ahead. And we wish them all the very best, the uh, Ignite 12 and Ignite 13 cohorts. Little known fact, Eamon Curtin was actually playing the piano live as he was recording that voiceover, but he's too modest, too modest a man uh, to admit that publicly. Folks, I need to thank a few people tonight, um, and they are the sponsors. Uh, the people who support Ignite in every way that they possibly can. And it is incredible support uh, that they give uh, throughout the entire process. They are, of course, UCC, uh, Bank of Ireland, the local enterprise offices of Cork City and County, Cork City Council and Cork County Council. So thank you so much uh, for all the support that you've given. Again, using my X Factor analogy, the polls are now closed. So that means that we have a winner of the best video pitch as decided by you, which was the one 
that appealed to you the most. We will find out in just a minute. But we're also going to find out which of our seven companies had the best business plan and which of them wins the Bank of Ireland Ignite Best Business Award. Now, they would not give me the responsibility of making this big announcement because, you know, everything else that's gone on. So let us bring in somebody who will guide us through the next part of the process. It is my distinct pleasure uh, to welcome Dermot Lynch, the flagship manager of Bank of Ireland, uh, who is going to join us now uh, from the judging committee panel. Um, Dermot, over to you. How are you, sir? Hi, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I think I've got the best role here this evening, which is to announce the award winners from the UCC Ignite class of 2020. Firstly, I want to say that Bank of Ireland is a very proud partner and long-standing sponsor of the Ignite programme. We've always enjoyed an excellent business relationship with UCC, and the Ignite sponsorship has been very successful for us and our brand, as supporting business startups has been a, has been a key priority for the bank and will continue into the future. Congrats to Eamon Curtin, well done to you and Michelle on successfully concluding another Ignite program and building what has become a very successful and recognised international brand for UCC. I want to thank my fellow judges, Ted Foley from Halo and Katrina Kelleher from SOSV, who adjudicated with me in what was a thoroughly enjoyable and very interesting day, where we assessed the business plans and engaged with each participant on their businesses from many different sectors, as you've seen online here this evening. Finally, I want to say sincere congratulations to all seven participants who did themselves, their families and Ignite proud in bringing some fascinating business ideas to this point, which is an outstanding achievement, especially this year with all that's been going on. I wish them every success with their business in the future and Bank of Ireland looks, looks forward to supporting them. So it now gives me great pleasure to announce the following worthy winners in the three categories. So first up, as voted by the viewers here tonight, the best video pitch. So the winner of that goes to your ability. Very good. Congratulations to your ability, David. We have to add the applause because obviously everyone's at home. So here, here's a little bit of applause for the sake of it, right? Here they are, the good people of Cork issuing their applause. So well done to them and well done to your ability. On to our next award, please. Sir. So still go on. I'll stop them. Move on. Okay, so the second award tonight, um, the award for the best business plan. And that award goes to tracks it. Congratulations to Conor Walsh and Luke O'Mahony. Okay, so finally, um, and the big award, uh, the Bank of Ireland Best Business Award for 2020, the Ignite programme goes to your ability. Congratulations to James Nottridge. Well done. Well done to James and well done to Traxit as well. Two awards for your ability so far. It's fantastic that these businesses are coming through. And I know you as sponsor, you mentioned already how proud you are. But again, just a, a real tribute tonight to the effort of everybody uh, in this process uh, who took part and gave their effort. Dermot, thank you very much indeed. Dermot Lynch, flagship manager there of Bank of Ireland on Patrick Street. And thank you very much for that. So there we have it, folks. We have our winners. Uh, your ability picking up two and Traxit picking up the award for best business plan but everybody put in such trojan effort to get to this point tonight and everybody deserves a big bull of us so if you are at home all 208 of you please round of applause if you can lift your glass or your cup of tea or whatever you're having and uh, toast everybody who got this far now uh, it is time to bring in if i'm not drowned out by the starlings who are surrounding me here it is time to bring in uh, Eamon Curtin of the Ignite programme who's going to join us now uh, just to uh, draw a line under this evening's proceedings Eamon um, good evening to you uh, uh, what a fantastic achievement by everybody who took part in this process tonight uh, not just to bring it all together in this virtual form because you described it I think during the week like painting the hall through the letterbox uh, which is probably a reasonable description of moving everything online uh, when we should have all been together. Yeah, Jonathan, um, thanks a million for, for steering us through the last 50 minutes or thereabouts. Um, I suppose one of the things that, that did strike me over the last number of weeks is the extent to which Ignite isn't just about teaching people how to start a business, it's about creating opportunities within which they learn the skills, the attitude, the approach to start a business. Uh, and 
I suppose nothing more relevant than what the guys had to do over the last three weeks where we put to them, this isn't going to be a live pitch in the beer hall. This is going to be an online video pitch and you got to do it from home with the resources that you got available to you and the remote support that we can access and offer the way we did it. Um, and the learning, the skills that have come from that, I guess, will stand to the guys uh, into the future um, and stand to them in lots of other ways as, as time goes on. I guess what we've seen this evening is we've seen three cohorts. We, we've seen Ignite 11 that have just finished the programme. Uh, and you've heard a lot about them. We've seen Ignite 12 that started the program six months ago, and they're they're well into the early stages of getting some market traction. And we'd welcome support from anybody who feels that there's something they can do to help those guys on, on the rest of their journey. Uh, and you got just some taste for who Ignite 13 are. They start with just the early stages of of, of understanding the business model vanity business model validation processes that we're going to use with them. Um, and right now we're open for expressions of interest for any recent graduate interested in starting a business in 2020 to join us over the summer for, for our next cohort and the pipeline rolls on. Um, I think picking up the point you made about um, the effort, uh, we've had 20 people that have contributed to tonight's production and none of whom have had the opportunity to be able to spend any time in the same space as anyone else over the last six weeks, never mind over the last three weeks. So from our guest speakers um, uh, through to, to Dermid and the adjudication panel, Katrina uh, Kelleher and Ted Foley, uh, through to the guys that pitched up their businesses, through to our AVMS support with, with uh, Michael Tobin and Uwe Schiller, uh, through to Judy Russell at, of the Vid Academy, uh, and Michelle, um, everybody in working out of their own locations has contributed to put together the, the event that we've put together this, this evening. Um, and I guess I would like to say a, a special thanks to Michelle. I think without her grit and determination and persistence and perseverance over the last three weeks, um, we wouldn't really have taken the jump to make something like this happen. And frankly, it would have been an easy enough decision to say we'd roll it over into the October uh, awards and showcase and let her run there. But I, I think we, as I would e expect anyone starting a business, you take an opportunity and you go for it. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing what we can do, bringing what we've learned from this evening's virtual showcase and the opportunity that has given to engage with far more people and to engage with the global audience. And I think we're seeing that coming through as well, which is fantastic. Tying that with, with a more bricks and mortar approach, maybe in Devere Hall come the autumn time, uh, please God, and, and see how we can have an even better event, combining what we've learned from both of those the next time around. So look forward to seeing everyone uh, back there uh, in six months' time. Okay, Eva, thank you very much indeed. And uh, what a wonderful point at which to bring everything here to a close. Congratulations again to our winners. Uh, congratulations to everybody who takes part in Ignite. It really is a celebration of innovation. These companies that are coming through, these people who we're going to hear a lot more from over the course of the next few years, we wish them every success, not to mention 12 and 13, who are about to come through the door. Well, virtually, eventually, they'll come back through the door in the real world. Look, it's been great. Thank you so much for joining us here for taking part in the poll as well. It made it special. As Eamon said, this came together uh, relatively quickly and uh, is very much a product of its time. Um, and we will learn from it and we will possibly do a little bit of mix the next time we have the Ignite Awards for Ignite 12. But thanks to everybody who watched. Thanks to everybody who took part in the proceedings. Um, I normally would say safe home, but you're already there. So all I will say is Slán, I will talk to you again soon on behalf of everybody at Ignite at UCC. Have a very good evening.